Today, computers are an essential part of the workplace. The computer is as common as the phone. It is virtually impossible to work without a computer today, at least for receiving emails. Yet, by and large, people are not trained to use computers for work. It's assumed that it's something everyone knows. That's why, every day, disasters like these occur. June didn't know how to correctly back up her company's data. When a hard drive crashed, she discovered she'd lost all her valuable data. Bill, a cleaner, plugged a faulty vacuum cleaner into the same circuit as the computer's network. The vacuum shorted, bringing down the server that is central to the company's online sales system. Thomas was ticked off by a supervisor. Returning to his desk, he sent off a sarcastic email to the client database. Sales dropped over the next month by 50%. Sarah emailed a list of jokes around the office. Unfortunately, one joke had a religious reference and upset a staff member who sued for harassment, winning a large sum of money. While surfing the net during a coffee break, Zach downloaded a program which contained a virus. It emailed itself to the company's suppliers, bringing many of them down. Zach's company had to pay for the damage caused. All of these potentially disastrous situations could have been avoided with appropriate training. This program shows you the basics of computer operation, how to use computers without endangering your health, securing your data, and the etiquette of doing business online. Computers are so much a part of our working lives, it's easy to take them for granted. Even if we don't use a computer for work, they're all around us every day. We tend to forget that computers are powered by electricity. That's why it's not a good idea to balance drinks on them, for instance. Any moisture finding its way into the keyboard can short out the motherboard. Don't put drinks on top of monitors either. If there are a number of computers in your workplace, they may well be powered on a single line. This is to protect them from any surge or malfunction from another appliance. Don't plug anything else into the computer circuit. Leave it for the computer. Don't unplug the computer from the network without getting authority from technical staff. Unplugging a computer can cause the network to malfunction. Make sure you know who is responsible for the technical side of computers at your workplace. Ask this person before altering the physical setup of your work computer. You're expected to know how to operate your computer responsibly. If there's something you don't know, ask the person responsible or a supervisor. Make sure you are familiar with the way the computer is organised. For example, which printer should be used and where to store your documents and data. Is there a system of naming files that you need to be aware of? If you don't know, find out. If something goes wrong with your computer, don't attempt to fix it yourself. Contact your supervisor or the technician. Remember, you are responsible for the well-being of your workstation. Treat it as if it's your TV at home. It's vital for both you and your company that you know how to use your computer workstation safely so it doesn't endanger your health. Sitting at a workstation for extended periods can cause back and neck problems, eye strain and carpal tunnel syndrome. It's up to you to use your workstation appropriately to minimise these problems. It's important that your workstation is correctly adjusted to suit your body. Your feet should both be on the floor directly beneath your keyboard or on a footrest. Your chair should be adjusted to the correct height so that your thighs are parallel to the floor. Your wrists should rest on the desk behind the keyboard and be level with your elbows. Your lower back should be supported by your chair. The monitor should be level with your eyes, not higher or lower. If you use a laptop, take particular care that you don't hunch forwards or lean over the keyboard. Sit up and keep your back straight at all times, particularly if typing for long periods. Every hour, get up and stretch for at least five minutes. Walk away from your workstation and then return. 
Make sure the lighting at your workstation is adequate. The contrast between your monitor and the background should not be too extreme. There should not be any light from windows or overhead reflecting off the screen. The monitor should be set to the highest refresh rate possible. Rest your eyes every hour or so by closing your eyes for a few minutes. Beware of injuring your hands, wrists or arms while working for extended periods at your workstation. If you feel soreness in the wrists or fingers, stop work and take a break. Stretch your fingers and relax them every hour. If soreness persists, consult medical advice. The security of your work and that of others in the company is essential. You are expected to know how to save your work and back it up in case of computer crashes. It's important that you know and follow your company's policy on data security. Some companies, for example, require you to keep a hard copy of all documents and store them away from your computer. Others require you to back up your data on a daily or weekly basis. Backing up is simply storing a copy of your data. It's best to store the backup somewhere physically separate from the original data. If the data is especially valuable, it's common to do two separate backups and store each backup somewhere else. Whenever backing up important data, it's vital to check to see that the backup is actually readable. After saving your backed up data, test the data by reopening a document. Is everything there and working as it should? Store backed up data in a separate place from the originals in case of fire or theft. Be aware, however, that some organisations may forbid employees from taking copies of work data away from the workplace. If you have to log into your workstation with a password, don't take this lightly. Remember, your workstation has access to your organisation's data. Use a secure password, not one that's easily guessed, such as your name, your spouse's name or that of your child. Even your date of birth is easily discovered. Don't leave your password in an easily accessible place, such as on your computer or in a drawer. If you must write down your password, put it in a place not easily discovered, such as in a file that isn't called My Password. When leaving your workstation for a while, log out of the system. That way someone else can't come in and access the organisation's data while you're away. If you take a laptop out of the office, take particular care if it has sensitive information such as work data. Don't leave the laptop unattended at coffee shops or airport lounges. Hide the laptop in a cupboard if you're at home. Know the serial number of the laptop and keep a record of it separate from the laptop. It's your responsibility to ensure that your workstation has a current updated virus scanner on board and that it's working. Don't download anything onto your hard drive or the network unless you've scanned it first. The internet is increasingly a valuable business tool, but it has its dangers. What is your company's policy on internet use of your computer? Some companies insist that the use of the internet is strictly only for business, even during a lunch break or tea break. Others allow occasional access for private use. Whatever your company's policy is, make sure you stick to it. If your company doesn't have a specific policy, use your common sense. Don't spend the day surfing the net for private reasons. Many organisations monitor the internet access of their employees. You should be aware that information from the net may not be suitable for work purposes. Unlike books, which have usually gone through a process of editing and vetting, anyone can put anything they like onto the internet. Be especially careful about downloading material from the net. It goes without saying that viewing or downloading pornographic, offensive or violent material may warrant instant dismissal if caught. Email is fast and efficient when used properly. However, the very speed of email can cause problems. Emails seem informal, but in law they carry all the weight of a letter. They can be called as evidence in court, and you can be sued for what you write in an email. Therefore, a good rule to follow is, never email what you wouldn't write down in a letter. 
Imagine your Aunt Sally is over your shoulder, reading what you're about to fire off. Would she approve? Be careful how you use email to communicate. Email is a cold medium, which means that it's difficult to read the tone of an email, unlike face-to-face -face communication or even the phone. It's easy to be tempted to dash off an angry email. If you feel angry, consider sending the draft of your email to a colleague or cool down over lunch before hitting send. Jokes can also easily be misread in emails. If you feel moved to use humour, make sure it's clear that your message is a joke. And don't send or forward jokes around the office. Some people can take offence and this can have serious consequences. Used correctly, computers can improve your workflow, enabling us all to provide better service and be more effective. However, in today's work environment, it's expected that we know all about using our computer, even if we haven't been shown how. This program has shown you the basics of computers, how to use them safely, how to protect your data, and the etiquette of conducting business online. Good computing.